Oh yeah. We we live. Hello and, and welcome to the Bauer live stream. Hi Ash. Hey. Hey Luke. Um it's been a while. It has. It has. How long this started about six months ago doing these live streams, didn't it? it started I think like, you and yeah. I did the first one. As long as lockdown. We did do, we did do the um, the first one. This is the last one that we're doing. Um, before we go on, though, we'd like to acknowledge the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, um, who are the traditional owners of this land upon which we have the pleasure of living and working. Um, we recognise that their sovereignty has never been ceded, and pay our respect to elders, past, present, and emerging. And we extend that respect to all Aboriginal people. Um, yeah, so we we did the first one of these at the start of lockdown, and lockdown's kind of lifting. So we're stopping them. And classes start back next week. Yeah, classes. So is that why we're stopping? Yeah, interesting. I think so. I think so. Um, yeah, like we've said a lot. I know. So, I mean, yeah. if you go on the YouTube page, I did it the other day. I was referring someone. Oh, we're looking for new teachers in here as well. So, do, you know, if anyone wants to teach some woodwork classes. Yeah, for sure. If you're, yeah, teachers and repairers, if you're interested in um, yeah. getting involved. Actually, repairers we need as well. Yeah. So Max is on the computer here. He's a repairer, a new repairer, but he, um, he's also got a new job Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, so we can't repair. So I'm, I'm having to repair Thursday, Friday. Well, no one's in here on Thursday, Fridays. Whoa, guys. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Also, we're starting up a new workshop in um, Parramatta. And so if you're a bit more, you know, west of Redfern or Redfern mm. or north or south, yeah. west. Yeah, workshop, um, workshop as in like uh, somewhere we can teach. So teach, school. teach. Um, yeah, yeah. Like this, like this place. And so, yeah, we need facilitators out there as well. Um, so, get yeah, it, otherwise get I'll have to teach all the classes and I don't know how to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. But you don't want to teach all of them because then you wouldn't have anything else to do. Yeah. Like, no. you wouldn't have time to do anything else if you taught all of them. Yeah. It wouldn't no, be much no. of a life. No. But the, a few weeks ago, we, um, what? we'll just chat. I think today we're sort of doing a bit of a session. I'll give you an overview. And uh, we were going to chat about um, a more... Um, yeah, a bit of an overview of why, or the stuff that we make, and maybe about, you know, the process of sort of finding things and working with second-hand materials, yeah. and maybe some of the the past sort of few years, I guess I would talk about the past couple of years for me, and as I've been doing it a bit more. Yeah, I, yeah I'd agree with that. I think um, we've been talking a lot about repair, um, but yeah, predominantly repair, I mean, that's what we do. Uh, but Ash and I, and a lot of the people who work for the Bauer, kind of got into this through more of a, um, making things from reclaimed materials. Um, so not necessarily repairing things, but kind of being creative and um, and utilising reclaimed materials. That's definitely how I got involved. So I guess mm. just... Do you think it was because you're a tight ass? No, no, I mean, no. No, I think... I know, I think about me. I mean, like, no, do I just do it because I I didn't want to spend that much money? I think, I reckon I'm, I have got accustomed to not spending money as a result yeah. of, of doing this sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, but no, I did it. I it was it was climate change as well. I got into it. I was oh, sick, right. yeah, totally sick of um, you know us not really doing much about it. It would seem on a you know broader scale, more political mm. scale, and and so my little little quiet um, protest was making things I found on the side of yeah, the road that's out nice. of out of reclaimed materials. Um, I saw this podcast the other day, and Zadie Smith was talking with Adam Buxton. Do you listen to that? No, I know Adam Buxton. I don't and so know. Zadie Smith is this author, and mm. she's really well spoken. I think she's British, but she lives in an author that's well spoken. I know, yeah. <laughs> and uh, but she in this interview, she um, was. I have a point. I do have a point, <laughs> no, yeah. and I'm just trying to find it again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry. For oh no, no, no! You're quiet. Protest. Yeah, yeah. So like, I'd have difficulty, um, particularly when the fires were on, when um, I had sort of some people around me saying climate change isn't real mm. and then I had you know my good mates I'd come back to Sydney and say scuba is a sea and blah 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 which yeah. I don't really relate to either and I just find it like so polarizing yeah, yeah, totally. and so like going to the protest although I agree with people I don't know I feel like uncomfortable for some reason and so, but then yeah. Zadie Smith she was talking about that um you know who's doing more politics someone who's like tweeting about it all the time and or like someone who is um you know volunteering at a refugee shelter or something like that mm, and putting the work in yeah and so i found that interesting nice and though you know if you're just kind of doing things if everyone's just doing little things to try and be green it's yeah nice. yeah i don't know did that make sense yeah it did yeah, yeah. yeah i think it's important that everyone does something does a little bit i mean if we all did a little bit it'd have a massive change yeah. So that's the kind of, and it, even though it is that there's that feeling of like 
your little bit makes bugger all difference, mm. which in you know in a way, if, if no one else does it, that's kind of true. But I think it's yeah, I prefer to to, to do like try mm. to do something, mm. you know, and yeah. like that makes me feel better about myself and yeah, doing things. Um, yeah, cool. But then there's the added benefit of it's fun to do what we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Creative yeah. outlet. Um, yeah, something I always talk about is that when you find things, I guess we'll talk about particular projects as well. But yeah, generally when you've got um, when you just have a certain amount of timber, so like I, I finished building this wall at Makerspace last week. So Makerspace is this other sort of shared workspace I work at. Yeah. And um, they have this corner in the building where they melt plastic and which sort of off gases around the top level. So they wanted to enclose it. I should have a picture, shouldn't I, of this? Sure, but no, but like just tell us um, a few words. And Show so then in, in uh, they wanted a wall and, I, and they were chatting up there one day and I turned up and they were, um, talking to this other guy about going to Bunnings and buying some stuff. I was like, no, I didn't. Yeah. Right? Like, you get all this. I was like, and I was like, I'll be able to get stuff really cheap from the Bower. Yeah. And, um, and then so that, a, a couple of days later, I was on Gumtree. There's a house getting knocked down in Annandale. Yeah. So I went there. And these guys were like sorting it out. They were doing a good job of um, laying it out so people could come and buy it. Yeah. Got this old framing that was really nice, hardwood framing. Uh, there was this old gate that was this really thick hardwood, and it was painted like this blue and white. Yeah. And then these all, and then all the old timber floorboards, tongue roof floorboards as well. Wow. And so I just did I do no? Did, I what, did you say you buy that off them? No, it was free. Oh wow. It was all free. So I went there. I think they went there twice, and I've got this little van with a roof rack. So I put it on the timber on there. And have a bit of a ballpark sort of idea of how much I needed for this two, these yep. two things. Um, and, then I, and then I went to the bar and I got a window and two doors for, I think, like 10 bucks. Yeah. But all the windows and doors are quite cheap. I think I get it a bit cheaper. Yeah, I think we, get, we definitely get it to probably too cheap. Too cheap sometimes. Yeah, yeah. But then also I was, you know, doing it for free for this other good community yeah, making yeah, place yeah. as well. And... Um, and so then I, over the next, I don't know, month or whatever, I built these two walls. And it's, it was nice that, you know, the limited amount of materials that I had, which was like a rough ballpark, I used it all mm. and I only just had enough, yeah, right. which is nice. And so, and that um, depended on, you know, using the timber in particular ways that were going to suit the project. It dictated how the cladding, the orientation of the cladding, because yep. like you had different lengths and things yep. uh, in this weird sort of space. Um, I know, then also these two French uh, women who turned up with this hardwood pallet, two hardwood pallets, I needed a bit more so I chopped them up and used that as the rest of the cladding. Mm. But the materials are what dictated how it looks as opposed to me sort of putting my yeah. designer hand on it. Yeah, exactly. Which is nice and it allows, like if you get bogged down and sort of having a tough time making decisions, it's nice when you, um, yeah, with the answer sort of just falls into place. I yeah. find that happens on all all projects I do with second. Yeah, stuff. totally. Yeah, yeah, that's part of the fun. I there's an ad that's on at the moment. It was, or maybe it's not on anymore. It was for Father's Day, and it was I think it was for Bunnings, and it's like Father's Day. Your father wants a shed, and it's, and it was this you know like kind of shed that was out of the you know boring construction pine. He had a pegboard on it. It was all Ryobi tools, and like I, I a shed is my dream. Having a workspace, I've just built one recently, but looking at that was the most boring. Like mm. it's just it, it it was just such a horrible space to be in. Like you do, like it's cheaper to use these reclaimed materials. And like Ash was saying, it yeah, it you create this thing. You're sort of governed by these uh, kind of lack of decisions that you've, um, well, lack of choices, I should say. Yeah, I don't know if this is gonna work. How's that, Max? Yeah, you can even go closer. Yeah. So see, there's these two walls. Yeah. Yeah. Can you see? We well, could use maybe. the second camera as well, Ash. Yeah, yeah, maybe the close-up camera. And so look at these materials again. How nice they are. <laughs> It's, you can see the detail. It's good. You can, yeah. 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 Oh, so see, yeah. like there, yeah, the blue, the blue and white um, sort of cladding that was from a gate. And so if you look at where's another angle, like this angle, that is like the gate sort of sideways. And so then they, they were the pallets, the cladding for the oh, pallets. Oh, right. so they put the makerspace space yeah, in there. That's nice. That's um, and these are the floorboard sort of bits <coughs> and the windows. Yes, yeah, so the windows yeah. and doors were super nice as well. If you took the paint off, I think they're like a really nice cedar. So yeah. the bowels were lots of great stuff. It's just hard to. It's hard to see the great stuff because it's got a mountain of dirt on top of it. Oh, that's actually, well, that's a good segue into my little, <laughs> little prop. But come down! It's just full. They need, they need more space, but it's going to have more space. So these, these guys here we've had floating around for a while, and we made, to demonstrate what, what um, Ash was talking about. Oh, like yeah, just, that's nice. And we've probably talked about this on our, one of these, um, these live streams before, but I can't stress enough the, like, 
how good all this secondhand timber is that we're chucking out. Like not all of it, some of it's just crappy pine and um, and I say crappy pine, but it's still totally usable. Mm. Um, but uh, stuff like this, sort of, you know, Australian hardwoods, a lot of it's, um, you know, not plantation grown. So it's, it's you know, old growth, it's, it's grown a lot slower. Generally, that means better quality timber. Um, and so this is what it looks like when you're pulling it out of a house. So you see it in the back of a skip, but lit a few millimetres beneath that is this beautiful, you know, furniture grade quality timber. So the stuff that we're chucking out um, that you can get for free and you can build walls with, it's like, it's beautiful quality timber. Um, and you can go for that sort of, you know, reclaimed rustic sort of look, which is a really nice aesthetic, I think. But if you wanted to, to put the effort in and strip it back and, and kind of get it back to the raw timber, you've got this really beautiful product. Yeah. It shouldn't be going away. It shouldn't be going to landfill and creating methane. It should be like, we should be holding onto it as a little, um, as carbon storage, you know, SCOMO's mm. all, all about that. Mm. So let's um let's let's get on board with that and you know and use this old timber. These slogans, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wood, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm leaving the barrow. I'm going to politics. Luke's going to be on um, gardening Australia soon. Yeah. Side note. Cool. When's that going to happen? Next year, sometime. Oh yeah. 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 Oh really? Yeah. Am I allowed to say that? What? Oh no, I don't. Know. I thought I spoiled something. No, no. <laughs> Uh, Luke's also finishing up at the Bower. He's been, how long have you been here for? Not entirely, I'll finish up in the workshop, but I'll be, um, yeah, still be, still be hanging around doing some teaching from time to time. Yeah, we've got a, um, a tiny house course coming up next year sometime. Yeah, which we'll be using completely with reclaimed material. So yeah, that yeah. sort of stuff that Ash is, was, was demonstrating is exactly the stuff that we're going to be going through on that. You should show a photo of your little shed. Yeah, I've got a, I've got a little photo of that. Which but, is um, similar. Let's talk amongst ourselves while I, I yeah, scroll yeah, through. Yeah, cool. There's nothing I hate more than someone like, oh, no, let me just show you a photo and then spending five minutes I know, I was on driving here and I had the thought, Look at all these people on their phones, and now we're doing a thing and just getting our phones out. Yeah, like well, we we're printed... on a computer watching people on their computers. Yeah, yeah, that. but I printed some um, photos out, but um, I didn't print that one out. So, oh, this is a good one. You can, we'll get it on. Maybe you can tee it up with your your, your um, little oh, yeah. close up camera. Do a star so, this light. is a good one. So, this is, yeah, this is great actually. I mean, I look like a bit of a goose, but that's nothing new. So the, um, this is a little shed I've built out of, oh, out of reclaimed um, colour bond, oh, yeah. which I got, someone got from the bower. There's a roofing guy down the road who, like, he replaces roofs and he's got a big scrap metal pile oh, wow. out the front of his place and he's let me take a couple of sheets. For um, what, free? Yeah, well, he's just taken it to scrap. Oh, nice. So, nice. And I dumped a couple of, of sheets that I didn't need back there as well. So yeah, I mean, it's similar aesthetic. I had a certain amount of, of, of sheets that I could use, um, and kind of if you if you're um, you know thoughtful about how they go together, we need a screen so we can see that as well. What are you doing there? So I'm proud. Yeah, I'm just the proud dad. <laughs> and just proud shit. But if you're thoughtful about how they go together, now when you're using reclaimed materials, balance is really important. I think like you don't want to have blocks of stuff everywhere. If you can kind of spread the materials mm. around. Um, so well, I guess the tiny house course might be a combination of those two. Aesthetics. Yeah, again, sign up for the tiny house course. It'll be great. I oh, I've got one more thing. The yeah, shirt yeah. I'm wearing, um, like me and my family have got these shirts. We call them uglies, but they've they come from a mate who who has a company that makes like all the rugby shirts. Oh, yeah. And with all the offcuts, they make these shirts that are like patchworks of, of the rugby jerseys. Yeah. Right. So and it's the, yeah. So that's utilizing all the old scraps and stuff, and it's like camouflage for that. So it's a great photo on a number oh. of levels. Yeah, we can, I think we can all bask in, in the varying levels of enjoyment of that photo. Anyway, thank you. Um, <laughs> I was chatting with someone, it might have been yesterday or the day before, they were asking about the tiny house course. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and, and uh, something happened. <laughs> no, I was laughing at your story and then I, I was trying to think back what I was talking about this for. Yeah. You've got to do this on TV sometimes. You feel when you forget what you say. Oh, okay, and yeah. then it comes back to you. Yeah. Well, you, can, you can see how we've improved over the last however many months we've been doing this. Yeah, when I, I've watched... Yeah, that was seamless. When I <laughs> watched some of our videos back recently, like the Tiny House one, for oh, example, yeah. Yeah. and we're talking about going to the, classic going to the toilet one. and, I mean, weird stuff. Yep. Um, but particularly the first one, I feel uncomfortable watching myself. I yeah, right. I haven't gone back to watch that. I might revisit it though, just to see how cringe. Yeah, I mean, it's good to learn from yourself. If yeah, it's just for sure. Put up in it. But yeah, I was talking about the tiny house, and uh, they asked if um, people with no skills can do it. I don't think who it was. And I was like, yeah, no, totally. Mm. I would assume the people who you've been done the course for. 
who have done it before have no skills. I think you've got to bring your own tools and stuff. Yeah, um, yeah, you can. I, I would, um, I'd still encourage people to do like maybe one of our beginners woodwork courses, which is a six week course that we do. Um, might be too late. Oh no, it's it might be it might be too late because I think we're doing we're probably tying house is going to be in February or March or something like yeah, that okay. I think maybe um, so you might have time to do one in the new year well, but it just it's an introduction to tools um, it's a six week course um, so th in the evenings you do one night a week and you you just get to get a little bit familiar with tools yeah that being said you don't need that for the tiny house course you can just come in completely green and we'll yeah. teach how to use all the tools yeah, yeah yeah I think one of the cool things about tiny house course is it's not just tiny houses, it's, but it's, you know, like it's a renovation course with reclaimed materials. You get an idea of, you get an idea of, um, of building techniques. And so you don't have to build a tiny house. It could be something you want to do around the home. So mm. I think that's a, that's a kind of a. Yeah, yeah. This is a slogan I go by, old but still good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just a slogan. <laughs> yeah, I have that as a slogan. It's a, it's a great, <laughs> it's a great and I, slogan. Uh, and I even have it on my car. And people wonder, oh, it's just parked out here as I got here. I got a good park out the front. Oh, you get and a guy came past and I was just sitting there because I, I don't know, I was a bit early. And then this guy, he saw me sitting there and he goes, love the sticker because it said old but still good on my car. And I was like, yeah. But that, um, that's just a slogan I go by. <laughs> It's a good one. Yeah. It's a great one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, should we start? Yeah, I think it'd be nice to talk. We could give like the process of each job or something would be nice, eh? Yeah. Just talk about a few examples. Yeah, well, I mean, I guess it's... You just show people the, um, the, yeah. the butterflies, they're real nice. Yeah, well, I might, I might, like, I guess we could start talking about, like, what, what do you look for when you, I mean, we, we started off pulling stuff from the side of the road that we saw value in, that we thought was old, but still good. Oh. It's a slogan. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, and I think this, this one's a kind of good example. I've actually been working on this, or not working on this, for like two years. I, was, I started it before I started working in this workshop, and then I've been fixing your furniture, so I haven't had time. Um, but I'd like to get back to it. And it, like you see stuff like this chucked out all the time. Um, yeah, which, all of it? This one, sorry. Yeah, I'm just pointing this guy here, this frame. So this, oh, this that one. one. This I was, guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, and as a woodworker, like I can look at timber furniture and it, it's kind of really achievable. Like, I, it might take me some time, but with some hand tools or some simple tools, I'm kind of, as my skills develop, I can look at a piece of furniture and go, I could make that, you know, I could make that at home. This, not so much. Like, this is intimidating. I'm not really a metal worker. And there's, I, you think of all the, the energy and all the effort and all the steps and all the transport and all these things that have gone into making this thing. Mm. It's, it seems to me such a shame yeah. to, for it just to chuck out. You know, like there is still such value in that thing. There's so much work that's gone into that. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously by, by salvaging that, you're not, you're not um, well, instead of buying it, you're not kind of purchasing all that energy and all that carbon out point again. But to me, it's just like, that's just a really cool thing that is really w w beyond my capability to make. From scratch. From scratch, yeah. Sure. So to, to kind of utilize that into inner pieces, kind of, yeah, one of the things I try to do, I suppose. Mm. Um, and so the way I plan to eventually utilize that is I've got timber, which I know how to work with, and I've shaped a little seat that kind of fits in here nicely. And sort of shaped it in like a traditional little... Um, how did you shape that? I used to actually used a circular saw for that. Right. Which was a bit... How's that work? I... Cut lines in it or something. Yeah, if you hold that, I'll show you. So, no, you get... It's a technique. Like, there's jigs you can make for it. I did it freehand. So, oh, yeah. you know, try this at your own... At your own peril. Are you recommending people try... No, don't necessarily yeah. do it. Don't copy what I'm doing, but I'll just explain how I did it. Mm -hmm. I got the circular saw. And I... I put the, put the guard down very low, so only a tiny bit of the circular saw was showing. And then I could just like skim. Oh, oh really? Skim a little Silence. bit around. Yeah, yeah, so or sort of a bit of, like, bit of an angle, because it's only, you've only got just the very tips yeah, of the yeah, teeth yeah, showing. Yeah. You can go around, and then once you've done that, you can drop it a little bit further. Right. And drop a little bit further. And it gives a pretty rough, you know, rough finish, but mm. I'll go back and, and sand that. And then to finish that, because it's flopping around at the back there, yeah. I, yeah, it'd be about salvaging some kind of cord. Like, it'd be really tempting to get some beautiful Danish cord or something like sure. that and pay for that new. But yeah, again, it's like there's all this stuff that's, you know, there's been all this um, sort of industry that's gone into making it. Mm. Finding something that's kind of, and find something that you think aesthetically is quite nice, 
and I'll do some put some holes in the back, wrap it round. It'll form a backrest as well. And right. I don't know, it'd be kind of an interesting piece. Yeah, cool. Or not, but whatever. Yeah, yeah. That happens when you're making these things. They're not always to everyone's taste. Mm. Yeah, that's good. Thanks. You take it in turns. Why not? Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Well, this is just something that we're doing at the Bow Workshop at the moment. So these are. That's why. Um, a couple of people have, are doing a renovation on their house, and they um, in Dulwich Hill, and they uh, have these nice old sort of sentimental pieces that they like, and um, so this one here. So they they're getting the the work us in the workshop to fix up or to make their two vanities and two shaving cabinets in their bathrooms, and so that they had these two pieces of furniture they wanted to use as a vanity, which I'm um, so I'm heaps into this. I think there's like lots of ways you could make. Mm. Um, bathrooms more interesting. So they have this this thing here without the legs. That's something. And um, and this what do they call it? Like an old pot stove. Oh no, something. it's um it's called a commode. Yeah. Commode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's old, old like um for putting your little potty in. I think. Or when it? you wet we in the night. Yeah, or poo 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 poo. Um, oh, I don't, I don't know if they did it, but it's a, yeah. So this was quite rough, and I said in the back, I think that they want to paint this, but I'm trying to talk them around to mm. maybe not painting. When you wet this, when you put a finish on, it's going to be really nice. And I, so, think, it, I think it looks really nice now, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. As is. With a finish, it'll look even better. But So they're going to get a stone top and put a sink in it, and then the plumbing, I think the plumber could probably cut out if the needs to come through here at all. They've also got another vanity with some drawers. We're going to alter the drawers so they sort of slide around the plumbing. So we did these legs, and then... I all... think what's nice about that one as well is it's a, good, it's a good example of that, you know, like this looked pretty old when we got it in. It had all, you know, flaky paint Ooh. and stains and everything, and we and ashes sand at the back to that beautiful timber, like that beautiful new timber, but, and left little bits like that that kind of, and, you know, you've got your nail holes and bits and pieces that are kind of a bit of a testament to its history. Yeah. Um, and I actually think it would make it look better. Yeah, this look at that. Looks give, it a bit, give it a bit more. Give it a bit more because that the grain in here, not the grain, the um the figure. Yeah, look at it. How nice! It's like three D. Can you see that in that in, up on the? This is method, so it'll just go away. Yeah. Um, and so they've got this, and then so the the shaving cabinet that goes with this. They've got um windows. So they've got these old window frames. I'm not sure the sentimental sort of value in these, or they've had a of it. significance. It's not. It's not a commode. You sit on a commode. So oh, Suzanne. Oh. It's a what? A Susan? You sit on a commode. Oh, I think. Or is it like a, a water closet? Because I think that's what this is. That's where you put your little potty or something. I could be wrong though. Oh, oh. Do you know what it is, Suzanne? Yeah. Okay. Hey, um, right. Nicole and Adrian. Uh, well, yeah. Yeah. The clients. <laughs> and they are surely they're not watching, but maybe they are. Where they get it from? And so anyway, to try and convince them to um to keep this as timber. I, if you sand these back, a lot of these old windows are made from like a, a West, western red cedar or a cedar. And so this was all white, and then we've sanded this back. Same again, like this, the timber along, I think it's this edge. It's super nice. But yeah. It's got a similar sort of characteristic as, um, as, the, as this. And so I made this cabinet here to match the window. Um, again, out of a sort of a similar timber here. And so um, they're going to have these in the bathroom. And they're probably a nice halfway point between a second-hand thing and a new thing. Yeah. And so I think it would probably, um, quite a few people would be into this sort of stuff. Yeah, like, it doesn't have to be really old. I, and I just think all the, um, all the architectural stuff you see, all the um, interior design stuff you see, it's just all a bit samey. Yeah. Yeah, and that would definitely, it's, it, you will get uniqueness out of the Yeah, the and it's got a little signature there, WK. And there's some weird little sticker of a sheet that I uh, just kept. I thought maybe oh, it's wow. interesting. I hadn't noticed that. It's got all these little nails in there. Yeah. Pretty. Um, hmm. But yeah, people can pay us in the bow to do more things like that. <laughs> also, yeah. we did one recently for Diana, and she what, she must fit out bathrooms or something. Yeah, she does like renos. No, that was, her, that was her house. Yeah. But she had these big old bits of something. Yeah, I think it was I think it was black butt, but these mass this massive slab that had actually, funnily enough, it was a big it was a big slab that must have been in the kitchen or a bathroom. Mm. Like someone had spent a, a fair bit of cash on this slab, and then decided, oh, I don't I don't like this anymore, so they ripped it out, 
and there was a big, it had been cut in half, which I imagine when they were doing the demo, they've cut this thing in half in order to, to, to remove it or to get it out of wherever it was. And there was a big jigsaw cut through the guts of it. And so we just, we, that's exactly where we glued it. Oh. We just glued those pieces back together with biscuits and screws and, was, um, and some, um, and some actually some butterflies. Like, I don't know if you can see this. Um, Max. But some, some butterfly joints to hold it together. And so just reinstated it to, can you see that? Or do I need to maybe no. tilt it forward? Tilt it, can tilt it that would be. Yeah, I might be able to. Oh boy! There you go, whoa, there you go. There we go. Um, so joints similar to this, that was part of the joint, there was a bit more to it than just that. But yeah, that was fun, like getting that thing that had been yeah. destroyed and just not trying to, we could have gone through a process of maybe cutting it all square and joining it so that it was, it was like this perfect join. You still would have noticed a little bit, we could have made it cleaner, but she was happy to kind of embrace the, this idea of really highlighting the repair. Like it, it was broken, mm. and she, she, she salvaged it, and she went to the effort of putting that back together, um, which is cool. I, I think highlighting the repair is really important. That's kind of what's happened with this piece here. This is a, lo a, a log that an arborist mate gave me. I'm not sure what the timber is, um, years and years ago. And it was... Uh, uh, you know, like I didn't know what I was going to do with it. It was sitting on my front porch for a number of years and then, uh, yeah, decided to make it into a kind of like a weird small workbench, um, kind of like hatcheting block type thing was like the inspiration for like um, carving spoons and that sort of stuff. Uh, and I put a little vice on it. I used to have a little studio apartment and, I, and this was underneath my loft bed and I did woodwork underneath the loft bed. So you don't need much space to do woodwork or repair and that sort of stuff. Um, but because of the where the... The, the, where the timber was cut from, so the centre of the the, um, uh, the trees right here, and so that's pretty common for splits to occur like that. So kind of technically, it's not the greatest slab to use for this purpose, but you know it's created this crack that you know I could fix and put these butterflies in that stabilised it more or less, and I've got this kind of yeah great workbench that's also got this interesting like little feature in it, which is, which is nice. Yeah, it's um, nice. You know, so that could have easily been chucked out or put on the firewood pile, but it's. It's not. Mm. I find with uh, when you're working with stuff that I like, say with sanding this, or like it bounce between people into sort of shabby chic or mm. old stuff. Like, how much do you tidy it up? Yeah. And I think you, if you um, if you can sort of tidy it, you may as well. Or um, if you can sand it a bit, you, like you tidy it up enough, you don't need to tidy it up any more than enough or mm. something. Yeah. And it makes sense when you're working with things. Like, oh, should I do that? And you're like, oh, I may as well. Like, well, you don't be contrived about it at all. It always just sort of, for me at least, yeah, makes yeah. sense when you're working with it about how much you should yeah, yeah, yeah. change it or tidy it. I like how you've left that little, um, that little uh, sort of feature in the panel, the moulding around the panel on this mm. one. And I mean, that's obviously not, or well, maybe not obviously, but it's not, that would have been a lot more fiddly and a pain in the ass to sand as well, yeah, wouldn't yeah. it? But so, you know, at, at leaving it there, Obviously, makes it easier to work with, but I think actually adds something to it. I think it's yeah, a good look. Nice. Mm. These timbers were a bit different when I glued these legs on. So I've got so these the, little yeah, so things the, the, to. The audience might not, yeah, so that's an adjustment that Ash has made with that. He's actually put those legs on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just cut these little grooves out so just to break up the materials. Yeah, which is super, or... super neat. Yeah, it's really nice. Um, yeah, I think it's funny, like with the, the stuff that I, I had to bring in. Um, all of them are based around making mm. things. So um, there's not actually a lot of things that just that I make for the sake of making. Like, like all this stuff is I've made in order to make. Oh, yeah. So like this little workbench, this um, bench up here is a low workbench. So that's something that we actually have at the dining room table, but they can be pulled out to use to, to work on things. And again, it's sort of like I'm drifting more and more towards work like doing stuff at home yeah. you don't need a big workshop like this to do everything you can just like with little workbenches like this <clears throat> or the one over here you can do stuff at home in your backyard what's this bit uh, that's a planing stop so that's for when you're planing timbers you can knock it up so that you can hold your timber against it and you can you can plane Ooh. Oh, one of these guys Plane your timber across like that, plane stop stops it, and you can use it like that. Mm. So it's sort of an old school. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
here's a, a segue set, set, segue set up. Yeah. So these, um, the, the block and the legs, I don't know if you see the legs on the sandy block as well, I guess you probably wouldn't. And then the legs on these and the, the kind of style. It's That's an interesting style, isn't it? It is an interesting style. We, t we teach that style at one of our courses, I think. Oh, still course. Yeah, still course. Right. Yeah. Where's, what's that about? Where's that from? Um, that actually, that's a, a, we're segueing all over the place now. Is this guy here. So a big influence on this work was a, a guy, Christopher Schwartz. He's a Schwartz. He's a um, uh, American woodworker. Um, and, and this book, the America, uh, the Atticus Tool Chest, um, sort of was a, a bit of an inspiration for our beginners woodworking course. Um, and it's this idea of, as opposed to going out and spending heaps of money and, and being a consumer and buying all this new stuff, with a couple of simple hand tools or simple tools um, and skills, you can kind of make things. Um, and it doesn't kind of go into reclaimed materials, but I think that's the next step as well. Like, as opposed to going out and spending all this money and buying all this new stuff and kind of contributing to this, this problem, um, yeah, get some tools. Um, get some old tools, fix them up, and actually make things that you need. Make quality items that you'll need and you know how to look after and you can keep, you know, for generations, really, mm. if you look after it. I find when I spend a lot of money on things, I don't enjoy them as much. I paid like $1,600 for a guitar, which is quite a bit, considering I don't play that much. And um, <laughs> But it did encourage me to play more. Yeah. And I had this, you know, old hand-me-down, which was no good. Um, old, but, old, but still not it, good. No, yeah. Old but not good. Old and bad. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I don't know. Some like it's been a bit of regret the whole time I've yeah, had it because it's interesting. Yeah. But uh, there's something like serendipitous and nice about what, like getting secondhand things. Same with when you're working on projects. Like you've got ideas for things, things just sort of pop up. But I guess that's the way all aspects of life, right? Like you manifest things. Here's I've got a story. Yeah. It, uh, you done with this? Yeah, I had this um, uh, like doing some architecture work in Newcastle, and I had this nice client. We were just doing this little pergola thing, um, and she had this nice old cottage, and she had this. It was like two French doors, and there's two windows on the side, and the whole opening was about like thirty six hundred. You know the story, eh? I uh, know bits of it, but I can't. I'm looking forward to hearing okay. it again. And so, she wanted to get rid of that because she was doing this new deck with a new pergola thing. And it was like groovy pergola, and so she wanted these nice, like nice, some nice new doors. And so because she had this nice old cottage, she wanted timber doors, but the set of t timber doors that were almost four metres wide was going to be like $12,000. Wow. And so, which she couldn't afford, she didn't want to spend that much. But then the alternative was a big aluminium sliding door, which was, you know, like maybe three grand, but it would just be completely different. Yeah. Um, particularly in a cottage, you know, they sort of stick out a bit. And so... We were trying to figure out what to do, we were getting quotes and stuff. I was just sort of maybe to kind of keep an eye out. I was driving the Bauer truck and we went to drop off a door from the Bauer, someone had purchased the door. Dropped this door off because this lady was doing a renovation. We get there and there's this big timber sliding door there. And the timber door, so I measured the one up in Newcastle and I think it was like 36.50. It needed 36.50. Yeah. The window was still in there, it's hard to know the exact opening. Yeah. Measured this door, it was 3700. So it was like the exact right size. And then I go, and so she was doing a renovation, we're chatting about it. I'm like, what are you doing with the door? She goes, oh, I don't know, do you want it? I was like, oh yeah, yeah, for sure. And so I paid $100 for this door. And because I really wanted it to happen, um, I, I sort of put the effort in, I didn't really make money out of the process. Mm -hmm. But the client up in Newcastle, she paid for, oh no, she paid for like the materials, not for my time because I, Spent a few weeks tidying it up, like stripping it back, yeah. and it was the same timber as this, as these frames, but each panel was like two meters wide, mm. and so, so it's like, and that's a seed is a really high quality timber for that purpose. It's really weather resistant, really yeah, light, yeah, yeah, like gorgeous. And the um, I getting the door out was a massive pain. I was in a rush. I had the bow truck, mm. and it was getting late, and. Oh, I didn't have all the tools there, so one, one of the panels we had to sort of twist it a bit as we took it out and the glass broke. And then one of the panels was actually fixed, so I had to buy these new tracks so I could get both doors sliding. Um, I had to replace the glass. The glass sheet that I took out was this like almost 10 mil, no, maybe like 9 mil thick glass, it was like 50 kilos the one sheet of glass. Mm. Anyway, I was spending all this time doing it. Eventually, um, um, yeah, tied it all up, all the tracks worked and everything. I took it up to Newcastle, had to um, get a trailer or something to get it up there. 
The idea to hire a trailer. So the client paid for that. Got it up there, the builders put it in, and it's awesome. And, so and it's like a weird sort of serendipitous kind of story. But that, I find that happens a lot that you, because one of the problems with, with second hand is that you, you, don't, you don't always get what you want immediately when you want it. You can't just like go to the bow, we have a lot of stuff, but you can't necessarily go, I want X and go there and X will be there. It is about keeping your eyes open and sort of mm. and seeing what can come to you. But I reckon it's crazy how often I need something. Yeah. And then, I mean, I work at an organisation that kind of has an access to a lot of secondhand yeah, materials. Yeah. But I'm in the workshop, so I, I go on my, my days off and have a look around the shop to see what's in there. It's amazing what, what pops mm. up, and like, that's a good example of that. And so what do you reckon that costs then at the end of it? Do you reckon she made some savings on, on using the second hand? Well, yeah, I think when you use the second hand, um, you've just got to factor in the builder's <laughs> labour for the builders. Yeah. But like builders usually charge, I think, $500 a day labour rate. Yeah. Um, so even that door, if it costs $12,000, if, if, if I got it for free, mm. even if the, or the builders would have to work on that door, but I mean, I worked on it, um, but, I mean, and people, I've got like another... Five, five weeks or something like that. Not yeah. yeah, which there's no way. Right? So, yeah. I mean, builders are always balking at second-hand materials because there is more work. But, I mean, no, if you not. allow for that, um, and you do it in sensible ways, you've got to have the sort of things ready, particularly windows and stuff. You've got to have a ready there yeah. because they've got their time frames and you've got to be ahead of them. So, I've got another client in Narrowena, and she is um, she's nifty, though. She's had, like, antique stores and stuff. And she's, well, she's an artist as well, so she knows what she likes. Mm. And she's been sourcing all, and she was telling me all these second-hand places I didn't know about. Getting all these um, doors and windows, and she's tidying them up herself. And I think that also gives people a lot more ownership over, over um, projects. Like, we get some stuff coming into the Bower Workshop. And people sort of want to, they want to help make it, but they just don't know how to do it. Yeah. And so I'm um, trying to find ways in which, um, like, yeah, people picked out windows and put them in the house. And they're so much nicer. Yeah, yeah, totally. Like, old windows and doors and stuff. Um, and windows and doors, are, I mean, I think they're like they're such an important part of buildings because you interact with them, you look out mm. of them. Mm. And, and so then when they've got more character than a out like aluminium sliding window or whatever, or like a, like yeah, it, just yeah, it makes, and then that's just, just through getting windows and doors and anyone can get, like from the bow, second hand windows and doors yeah. and they make such a big difference. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Are there any, um, any questions, Max, for us today? No, no questions. questions for us. Okay. Are there any people watching? Hmm. Cool. Okay, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Yeah. yeah, thanks for listening to the rabbit on about ourselves. Um, so what else, what else we got to talk about? More projects. Talk about that as a project. That, that little um, Dutch tool chest over there is a project of mine. Um, it's like the, like, maybe the third, third toolbox I had. I think when you get into making things, you start to, um, you start to get obsessed with, like, what your, your workspace and your toolbox and all that. Mm. Um, this is a pretty good example of, of second-hand timber though, Oregon. Uh, this is all Oregon, so this is um, a Douglas fir. Um, it got shipped over from from Oregon, from sort of the north northwest United States, and, and, and so many homes and stuff were built with this up until, I don't know, the 80s or early 90s or something like that. And there's some some of it, you know, some of it again was from, you know, old growth forests and stuff and you get these beautiful timbers um, and it's just, just all getting chucked out and there's so much you can do with it. Uh, and so are all the tools. Um, they're all second-hand tools. That really? Got, it is? Except for that. Ah, right. <laughs> there's actually, there's there's three things in there. And that? And that, the router plane. Did you pay for these? Actually, oh, no, there's, no, they were, I paid for this one. I bought that one. Is that nice? Um, and then there's a Japanese little detail saw and this router plane in there that I bought. Um, and it's like you were saying, uh, talking about you know how you can feel bad about spending money on mm. something. Oh, I, I don't feel bad about spending money on something new or spending a lot of money on something new if it's of extremely high quality and I know that I can keep it for a long time. I feel bad about um, spending money when it's something new when I just haven't, I haven't been organised and I'm just like, at mm. the last minute, go up, just... I just I'll throw money at the problem and get it done. Like yeah, if I yeah, yeah. if I'm a little bit more organised, I generally don't have to do that. Yeah. Um, but if you're going to spend money on something that's good quality, and you can keep. I think mm. I think that's all right. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, and so within this little toolbox, like you, like with this kind of what this book's trying to trying to sell the idea of, and what we do in our beginners woodworking courses that we wanted. To, um, we teach people how to build a toolbox. It's a different toolbox. It's sort of a smaller version of an old uh, school joiner's Should toolbox. I get it? Okay. Yeah, go and get it. Go and grab one. Let's do a little pitch of the um, yeah. classes. Um, Max, Max is going to be teaching. He's great. 
teacher. Um, will be, and you, you learn some simple skills where you use a, a, a few basic tools. And then at the end of it, the hope is that you can take those toolboxes, fill them with those tools, and then go off and make stuff. That's the same thing with this. Like with, within this toolbox, ideally, are all the tools I need to make a huge amount of variety of things and fix things as well. Um, and I put it on a little rolling trolley that used to be an old cupboard, and I chopped that cupboard in half and Where's stuck the it on. And actually, so this is a good story about like the repair guys just being nice to you. I found this cupboard, chopped it in half because it had these nice little drawers. Can you see that over there, mate? And it fit on bloody perfect. That's weird, right? isn't it? Yeah, that's the um, repair, you reused already, repair gods. You've already made that box. I'd already made that box. Wow. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy. So this is the similar to Luke's um, two things, um, the stool course that we do. You see, they have this cool uh, joinery where there's no, um, um, like, metal fixings. I mean, yeah, that makes sense. So there's the little timber wedges here. Yeah. It's groovy doing that stuff. It's really yeah, nice. so you have these stakes and they kind of go through and suck like You make these into like a pencil kind of shape and they stick it in and wedge them in. Yeah. That's a course. Two that days. is a course. That's a two day course. That's, That's a four day course now. Uh, four evening course now. I think there's one running on Friday. It's like two and a half hours on a Friday evening. Yeah, yeah. Everyone knows what you want to do when you finish big day work is just come in and get on the tools. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, yeah. No, it is good. I think that the one message that Shane, Shane's been on these videos before, mm -hmm. he says that, you know, you don't focus on the, the end, end object because you, um, you end up trying to rush and you just want to get it yeah. done and I feel like it's stressful. Totally. And he says yeah. you, just, you just focus on just the task, the task at, at hand, hand. Yeah. and just sort of enjoying you're doing your, each saw cut or chiseling. Yeah, I think that's, I mean, that's not necessarily just about reusing things, but these kind of, these kind of workshops that we do and, and doing this kind of work, like if you want to make a toolbox or you want to make something on the weekend, um, and so you might not have all the machine tools. So if you're like, if you want to go into business making furniture, you need to have a workshop, and you need to have, you know, power tools um, and things that can do precise cuts really quickly. But if you're doing it because you want to do it and because you, you enjoy it, it doesn't have to be quick. And if you can kind of see the process as like a really nice learning experience, yeah. So you go, you know, you spend a whole weekend mucking around with some timbers, working on a project, and at the end of it, that project's not finished, but you're just on your way. Like mm. that's cool. That's mm. good. Like see it as a see it as a um, as a hobby and, a, and an educational process. Yeah, yeah. And then at the end of it, when you've finished and you've created this kind of this really cool thing, then it's 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 super rewarding then. But you don't you're not there to pump stuff out. Yeah. Like I don't do woodwork. To, I don't want to be a factory worker. I couldn't think of anything worse than mm. sitting behind a table saw and just smashing out cuts. I want to. You want to be an artist. I want to be an artisan. Yeah, yeah. Um. So I remember I was at this shared workspace years ago, and there was a woman in there, and she was a ceramicist. But she turned into a machine because she was so successful. Yeah, yeah. And it seemed a bit sad. So I yeah. think she'd have like agreements with a whole bunch of different restaurants and stuff, and they would pay for her cups and plates and stuff. But she would just be at these molds all day, just like, sitting down. Yeah, you become, yeah, you do. You become a machine, don't you? But yeah, I don't know what the lesson is there. Sell your stuff for more. Well, I think I reckon the lesson is there for, for, for those of you out there that wanna are interested in doing this sort of stuff, and not necessarily as a job, that you don't need all those machines. Mm. You, know, you, don't need, you don't need a workshop like this. Um, obviously it does speed up some of the processes, but you can, if you've got a good circular saw, you can do a lot of, a lot of work yourself yeah. um, in, in the milling process of so getting it down to sort of the, the basic kind of components that you want. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, like with a, like a simple bench, it can be something like this, you know, like the low bench or like this, or something a bit more mm. you know, sizable if you have the space for it. Yeah. Then with hand tools, you can do so much of that work and just enjoy that, like enjoy not being around these really noisy, dusty machines and, yeah, yeah. and using your own power and your kind of own skill um, and sort of hand-eye coordination to, oh, yeah. to, to create these things. Um, the, I was thinking one, this is what I say, I did print it out, look, I didn't need my phone <laughs> after all. Um, in the courses, I say to people that a like, good way to get into it, because a lot of time when they finish the course, they're like, oh, what should I do, what should I do next? And um, the Bower, like when I moved to Sydney, and someone had sort of told me about the Bower, and then I would like it. And so I started by, they have this consignment program, so you make furniture and you sell it on the floor. Mm -hmm. And the Bower, um, 
I think they get like 30% of the sale. But Is it 30%? I think it's 30%. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Um, I found out that when gallerists, when you have your artworks in galleries, they take like, gallery takes like 60%. That's outrageous. They're like banks, aren't they? Gallery owners. Oh, and, um, and so I started, I was interested in like putting tiled tiles in things. That was my first introduction to you, was your tables. Oh, really? Yeah. And it was one of those things of like, when I saw them, it was like, oh, fuck, up. that's a really good idea. Which I thought really? Yeah. I think they're the opposite. Jealous. Um, also, actually, see, look at this table. See that table there? Yeah? Oh, yeah, can you do the zoom in one? <laughs> you can stand wherever you want in the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So, see, this one, I, um, this was a similar type thing where I just went into, uh, mum and dad, they wanted a, uh, a table, a long, skinny table. And so, I think I started with, um, see that middle piece that runs through there? I just had a long piece at work and it was like 2300 long. And that's how I, did so you didn't have the notches or something cut out of it already, or did you? Cut no, no. So there were these other bits here that I made a like a table with, and so I just used those lengths that I already had because um, they're of a, like a certain width, whatever it was, mm -hmm. and so that's how I sort of got the, the dimensions of them. Um, so the length, um, and then the top as well it was these two um, really wide bits of timber that I. Um, found at the bower, but they were cut, so I had to sort of cut them through the middle, glue them back together, mm. and then, um, and that sort of dictated the Oh, the that's width, a cool way of doing it, so as opposed to planing them down, you cut them and then rejointed them so they were kind of flattish, mm. yeah, that's a good technique. Um, that's, yeah, that's an awesome table, that one, man. And it, um, so yeah, so I mean, I, I'm not that attached to it, because... I'll have it if you want, if you know, if we're just... Well, yeah, I'm taking it, it's in this exhibition in Sydney, it's for sale, if anyone wants to buy it. I probably reduce the price because I need to get rid of it. So cool! Down. Like it's like I think they did they call it the deck table or something. It's like deck a table. I reckon it's like a fish. It's like a fishbone table. Like a boat. Um, like a and like so, a, like but a yeah, that that just kind of um, came about. Um, and people are nice nice about it. But like these sort of things as well. Like at the so that I might sell that at the bow for like nothing. But I mean, yeah. I know, whatever. But this um like this sort of stuff. So when I was driving the truck, there were these legs when we were at a guy's house and he was chucking a whole lot of stuff out and I just, there was this old chipboard table that he chucked out the front so I just ripped the legs off. This was like an old cupboard door I think at the bower um, and then I f got another piece of timber to fill in a gap because the tiles didn't quite fit three across mm -hmm. and then to put these nice pink tiles in that were from the bower as well and then I added that extra trim maybe just for a bit of extra um, dimension. But so that was just it all just sort of, you yeah, don't make any decisions yeah, yeah, about it at all, bit, really. Just, yeah, it tells you how to make it. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I'm going to go grab a piece of timber outside. Can you just make a um, and, and here you go. Sure. This one I'm interesting as well. This, um, I don't know what I'm looking at. This was, I think, you know, if you've pulled apart cupboards before, often the, um, the base of the cupboard uh, is just sort of close to the ground. And you've got like the, you might have two bits of the cupboard that sit inside of it. And then you'll have like a sort of crown piece which sort of holds them together. And so that surround was the base, and it had these little knobbly feet on them. Um, and so initially, and I just sort of filled it in with some, with some tiles, um, these pink, and then another little strip of timber to fill it in. It just had these round knobbly bits. It was sitting in the bow for like three months or something, and it wasn't selling. So I took it out, and I found a, um, like a baluster that was about a metre high, and I chopped the baluster up into four. And, I, and that's why, that's the end of the baluster, and then the other bits were rectangles. Oh, yeah, yeah, cool. That's why one of the legs is odd-sized. Um, and so it's like this Frankenstein-y looking kind of table. So I did that just to raise it up a bit and put this shelf underneath. And, um, yeah, it's nice. Yeah, it's a good find. It's got random bits and pieces put together. Yeah, totally. When you were saying that you've used an old wardrobe door, this piece behind you, this is something we get in the bower all the time, these old veneered wardrobes which are heaps out of favour, they're not, like, everyone's got built-ins and these big, um, these big wardrobes a lot of the time people don't want. Um, so we end up breaking them down from time to time and, and they're, like, those veneers, they're just beautiful. You, can you get a close-up of that, Matt? Mm, close up. Like, I reckon that's a real, um, just untapped resource. Like really? that, yeah, yeah, totally. It's, covered it's, doors. Covered doors, oh, you know, nice. like a lot of them are plywood, so they're very stable, so they're super easy to work with. That's it, I'm saying. Yeah, but then you've got these really trippy kind of like book matched or double book matched. You All know, right. Or, tri way. or triple book matched, yeah. Like, so it's, it's, yeah, I just think they're just a, a thing of, of beauty. Yeah, great. And they're getting chucked out, so keep your eye open for some of those if you're making some furniture at the, um, at the bow. Yeah, Thomas yeah. McDermott. 
Oh, it's my spy here. Hang on. Mm. Hey, Tom, can I call you back later, mate? Oh, wow. Okay. Can I half down? Um, the courses are starting up next week, so Monday, I think Luke's teaching. I wonder if they're booked out. Not this week, another one. Um, also, I trained up my dad to be a, a teacher mm. at the Bower. It was nice. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it's a yeah, family affair. Yeah, Luke used to get his mum coming in here and she, and she would do it. Yeah, she still comes in. I, yeah, she's been a while, actually. Six months? It? Yeah, since COVID. Um, what was that? She was just a volunteer. Volunteer, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and my, mate's, my mate's dad comes in as a volunteer, Paul. Oh, yeah, that's really? how when you know Paul. Oh, that's how Paul got in here. Yeah, it's all mates. So it's all people that are interested in the in, in helping out yeah, yeah, yeah. in the cause. There's like, a men's shed in here on Thursdays, and the it's men for the first hour, and then women can come for the last for the, two. For the last couple. So of hours, I think yeah. they, mean, they talk. Well, I'll do the men's shed stuff for the first hour. And do prostate talks and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think that's the line they use a fair bit. Right. Um, yeah, I've actually maybe you've got photos. I've got a couple of photos of some things that when we were probably you know get preparing for this because we were preparing for weeks and weeks for this presentation. Uh, I look, was looking through some old photos of mm. things that I've done, and like I haven't done this you know, sort of stuff for myself for a long time, but it was, it was fun to do it. Yep. And this is one that I made for my mate, mate's daughter, when she was about two, I think. Oh, yeah. And this is the... Oh, hang on, sorry. Be careful. There you go. <laughs> this is the... <laughs> yeah. This is the Rue Chaos Wagon. So this is... um. I don't know. I'm sure you've, if you've, particularly if you've got kids, you've seen these crappy little plastic, um, like toy bikes around. Um, and I kind of gave it a bit of a Mad Max do over and stuck some dolls' heads and just made it a bit freaky wow. and stuff. And their kids are growing up and they've completely outgrown this thing. But that's something they'll probably keep for a long time. One because a mate made it, I suppose. But it's it's become something a little bit more interesting. Like the amount of kid stuff you see on the side of the road oh, is just, goodness. it's outrageous. Like give it, give it to someone, find someone else that's got it or we need to start a library or something mm. where you can just go and borrow stuff for kids because it's, it just gets, so much of it gets chucked out. So that was a kind of fun one to do, mm. um, making it for a mate. And then what else have I got? Oh, this is a kind of, this isn't that cool, but this was for a drummer friend um, that I got an old hi-hat stand and then got a piece of timber because of the um no it was a snare stand actually and so they they don't sit flat and yeah. so the piece of timber in has to be cut on an angle in order for the top to be flat oh yeah and i did that by hand did that with a handsaw oh that's good it took me like it took me hours and is that firm yeah cool yeah but it was yeah i'd, I'd like I'd, yeah i'd hope i could do it a bit quicker next time because that was pretty brutal yeah nice oh fun. with the i started showing these because i was saying um yeah the first tiling tables is just uh, that's what I thought of to try and start making stuff to sell the consignment items at the bower so I'd recommend if anyone wants to do it you pay what 10 bucks for a membership or something 10 sure. or 15 bucks I think to become a, a, mem a bower member a bower member and then yeah. you can yeah you make things it's good, good to also have a benchmark to aim for and it um yeah it forces you to finish things yeah just yeah, yeah, yeah totally yeah. and it's and it's I mean it's it's about showing what's kind of possible with these reclaim materials. So mm. have fun with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Here's another, another little photo that, again, just going back to what I was talking about before about those, you know, metal frames and stuff, which are a bit out of, you know, out of um, the realm for just someone in their backyard to make. You know, stuff like old garden chairs. And they're so easy to fix up. We see a lot of garden chairs that have got old timbers that have rotted out. They mm. weren't particularly good timber in the in the first place. And if you can replace them with some nice hardwood, they turn into something that's really Quite, quite, quite nice. pretty, pretty and nice and, and long lasting. Nice. Yeah. Hmm. Um, we just talk all about projects. How long have we got, Max? Yeah, seven minutes. Seven, seven minutes. minutes. We can we can talk for seven minutes about stuff. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Luke's um, finishing up next week. Yep. But at the end of next week, we're um, yeah finishing setting up the Parramatta workshop. There used to be a shop there, but it um, over COVID decided to dissolve that and uh, do another workshop thought it might be more bit beneficial for that. yeah yeah well we've had so much we've had so much such a good response to all our workshops um, yeah yeah I mean they yeah, it's been great actually it's a good it's sort of I guess it's something that sort of just happened organically but it's been a really good opportunity to talk to people about this this idea of reuse and repair and, and what we do and share the skills about mm. what we do. Mm. Um, I, th say yes. I think, I mean, for us, that's that's a huge component of it. Obviously, we're selling this message is something that we believe in, think is really important. Um, but for, for people that come and do the courses, I think a lot of it is, you know, there's a lot of people that sit behind a computer all day um, for their work. So actually coming to, to a space like this, getting on some tools, 
and shaping things with your hands is, is really quite cathartic mm. for people. Ah, oh, sick. Yeah, cool. Yeah, and so over COVID, we did all this, um, all this additional stuff because um, we had, you know, a lot of people and... Um, and we had time, like we weren't doing, we had to shut down all our workshops, yeah, yeah. so a lot of the work that we would otherwise be doing, we couldn't do. So we, um, we were lucky enough to be able, yeah. able to have access to JobKeeper and we... We put our efforts to um, yeah yeah yeah. And that's why all the videos, all these videos, and all the yep. live streams. We also started doing live streams for councils. Um, but and then yeah, so I was I was given the task of producing these worksheets for the workshops. So if you come to the workshops, you've got these little um, little worksheets. We give an overview of a particular thing in the workshop. It's, this is gluing and clamping, and it's not like an instructional sheet of the you know bit by bit of each course, but just a little sheet of you know which glues you might use you know um, how to set up this is about like to do a dry fit so before you clamp things together you always put it together without the glue to see if it fits there's a bit of a gap you take it out you might clean it up a bit more yeah. um, clamp so it's pretty basic but then we you know we've got one on timber talks about timber timber movement and and timber terms um, and so this one is, on and this is stuff that you'll obviously get taught like in much more depth within the courses mm. and so and we've had like you know, I think you can go do a course, and I've done courses, and then you don't you don't do anything for a while, and you go, you, you can't remember it. You know, yeah, yeah, so yeah. this is this is the idea. It's just to jog people's memory in a kind of fun and aesthetically pleasing way. Yeah, in a sort of colourful way. Like yeah. I know you get worksheets in the past, and you might not look at them, but at least these kind of look like a little bit of a poster. Stick it on the fridge. Power tools, drilling, driving, prying. We have seven of them. I think there were more that I have to make. There's another one on finishes, which is the eighth and maybe the final. Here, measuring marking is a good one. I think so, yeah. This is a bit of a classic measuring and marking. I don't know what he's looking at at the moment. Um, oh, this one as well, hand saws. I think he's looking at the big screen at the moment. The particular um, different types of hand saws. So anyway, that's in there. Yeah, well, that, and that's something that we've been wanting to do for a long time, actually. Mm. Have a bit of, bit of coarse material. Yeah. Um, so that'll be nice to actually hand them out. Yeah, when we get back into workshops, which are starting in on Monday, Sunday. Oh, Sunday. We have a native beehive course here on Sunday that Annette's teaching. Yeah, um, um, and then they're back in full swing as of Monday. Yeah, yeah. So there are a lot of the intro to woodworking courses, uh, the intermediate woodworking courses, getting a bit of a rejig. But um, Pete, our new workshop manager, is working on that. Yeah. And then there's a uh, this school course. There's a whole bunch of courses. What Planter else? box course. Planter box course. Um, Upholstery course, home DIY course is a pretty popular one. Oh, yeah. My dad's um, teaching that. That's yeah, that's one if you just want to learn how to hang a shelf or to hang a picture or mm. do some basic stuff around the home. Uh, that's a great one to do. That could be another good one to be to go in conjunction with the with the tiny house course mm. as well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Um, what are you getting up to this afternoon? I'm going to go back to the workshop. Oh, you're going to I've make got, stuff? Yeah, yeah, I'm getting power in the workshop. So. Oh, cool. I'm going to go back and start making things. Oh, that's great. Loving it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah come and do a course, I guess. Yeah, come and do a great. course. Yeah. Get out there and, and find stuff on the side of the road. Like this chair didn't have a seat. We had a spare seat, so we put it on the chair. Yeah. And now you've got an original piece. Very simple, but it can, it can be that simple sometimes. It doesn't yeah, have to yeah. be complicated. Good project with the kids. Going out and making something with stuff you find on the side of the road. Yeah, nice. It'd be good to um, get the uh, the schedule schedule of all the um, eastern suburbs or when they do their coastside pickups. Yeah, so it can, can be go hard. I think it can be hard to find that. I've looked into going to talking to councils about doing that, and it yeah. wasn't as easy. I think no, they no, really. make it a bit harder. They want, don't want people running just around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's amazing the stuff you can find out. Yeah, all right, I think, how are we going for time there, Maxie? We're at 58 minutes and 25 seconds. 25 seconds, so we've got one minute and one and a half minutes. Um, right. Art, from we trash? Art, from <laughs> Art from Trash is this Friday in Parramatta, and it's a um, an exhibition, I think there's like 60 or so artists who put works in. Last 70, year. actually, I think oh, we've got really? 70 artworks, so it's more than we, we did last year. We yeah. had, the, had the first one last year. Mm. And last year was... Um, yeah, it was quite nice. It was hey? awesome. Yeah, it was great. You actually put these things in, didn't you? I did. And there was some concept behind it. Yeah, re-harvesting. Re-harvesting old growth forests, I think, was the oh, concept okay. behind it. And yeah. strange to know and bought it. Oh, right. Weird. Are they for sale? Oh, well, they were, yeah. Everything's for sale at the, everything's for sale at the, at the Art From Trash thing. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, Art From Trash, are you that art made from trash? Yeah. But this Friday, it's in Paramount. 
Parramatta for two weeks. And then it's coming to Redfern for, I guess, another two weeks, which is just out the front here at 107 Projects. Yeah. Um, we got anything else we need to, pre like, um, Spruik, are we still doing the one-on-one -on -one consultations? Um, yeah, so that's something that we've been doing when we can't do our repair cafes. If you have got something that's broken or you'd like some advice about something, or even if you've got some advice about, you know, making something from reclaimed materials and you want to know how to put it together, um, we have an online service where you can book in a, a Zoom, 15 minute Zoom conference, I guess, with, with one of our, our makers and or repairers, and you can chat to them about your, your specific project. So that's a good thing to utilize. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah, Very good. cool. All right. Come into the Bower store. And this is it. This is the last of the live streams. Um, yeah, go on YouTube. Rob, yourself right. we'll watch the um, yeah, go on to yeah, all the Bower website. They're all up there. It's a really good resource if, you, if you're interested in learning about repair. Um, there's there's a, a huge amount of um, content on there now, so you can you can wade through that and, and mm. upskill and get into it. Cool. All right. Thanks for watching. Yeah. Thanks, Ash. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Max. Oh, very well.